Alright, so I got this little home spot cube, I believe it was called, uh, off of AliExpress. It's used. You can see there's some cracks and defects. Um, apparently they came from Japan, which looks reasonable. It looks like it could possibly be all in Japanese. I've fired it up, connected to it with my phone, gone in, uh, just gone through randomly trying all the different menus, looking for a uh, language setting, and I couldn't find it, so it looks like it is in Japanese only. And uh, this is just supposed to be a little wireless uh, access point or router. So there's a little switch on the back here to, uh, to select it, auto AP or router. Uh, you got two Ethernet ports, one's when the other one's worked is LAN. Power in, there's a reset button. On top it's got this single button up here, which uh, from what I can tell from the documentation that I've looked at, WPS... Yeah, and then on the bottom we got the label here and it gives you the IDs and the, the keys for the, the network. So there's three of them listed. The first two are in the uh, 2.4 gig band and this last one is in the 5 gig band. So this supports both, uh, both bands. You can use both radios simultaneously. As far as I can tell it doesn't support AC mode though. You can't uh, you know, bond the, the bands together. So you, it supports A, B, G, I think N, but not A, C. So I decided that, well, I was going to take it apart and see what kind of construction there is. So I've already removed the rubber feet here that were in the corner, and it turns out just these two here on the side opposite of the power, there is a Torx way down in there. So uh, it looks like that's it, just these two screws, and then hopefully this thing will slide out fairly easily. Alright, well the one screw came out no problem, the other one, uh, forget it, so when first you don't succeed, just find a more destructive method. You know, make sure if you're going to drill out a screw like that, that you dump out all the shavings, obviously, before you pry. And I'm in. Ah. Uh, Oh, it's a real tech chip. You see their logo. I'm gonna get some more light here. There, through Studio Magic, added a little bit more light, and I can see it's a real tech uh, RTL 8196C uh, chip in there, and we got another real tech, this little guy, which I can't read from that far. RTL 8192DR. So as you can see, I went uh, through a little bit there and hit the board, so I'm not sure if I screwed it right up, but yeah, I went a little too far on that. But I noticed there is two antenna uh, connectors there. Let's just take a look and see what else we got in here. Looks like that'll be just the button and this uh, LED up here in the corner. Okay, so after a few minutes with the Magic Google machine there, I found some answers as to what's what here. So, surprise, surprise, right here we've got uh, system on on chip there. And it uh, I managed to find the data sheet for it. And just a quick overview, I skimmed through, the, through part of it just to pick up the features and that. So it looks like it's got a 5 port Ethernet switch, um, just 10 100. RTLX 4181 RISC CPU that can be run at up to 400 megahertz. USB 2.0 uh, host controller, 22 GPIO pins, PCI Express host, supports up to 128 megs of uh, RAM, and uh, it runs off 3.3 and a 1 volt rail for the, uh, I'm assuming obviously for the core. So the other side here with this uh, metal can I would have assumed would have been where all the uh, RF magic was happening but turns out that it's this guy right here I couldn't find the data sheet for it for this exact part but uh, I did find other parts in the same series and they were um, wireless controllers uh, with PCI Express interface so it looks like they're using PCI Express but you can see here 
or possibly see that you have there's the RF coming out for the antenna exiting right there and on this side so it's just got this little uh, the guard around it with um, you know obviously no no ground plane there and then uh, couldn't find the uh, the RAM because on the back side uh, big surprise there we've got uh, up there is the flash which was a 64 megabit uh, SPI uh, flash so it's 8 megs megabytes of flash that you have this little guy over here turns out it's just a LM393A comparator not really sure what they're doing with it but uh, there is some traces coming in here that come back up to this uh, reset switch here but I so if it is located over here because of this the reset switch it could be simply uh, for a debounce so this can here that I initially thought the RF uh, magic would be going on underneath and uh, is obviously not I'm guessing that must be a shield over the RAM must be in there and I don't really feel like pulling it off to see how much RAM this thing has like I said it supports up to 128 megs of RAM with up to a 16 so I'm not really too sure what I'm going to do with this thing it's not really uh, huge use to me as is and uh, I was thinking about maybe trying to uh, to hack the things but uh, now that I got some information that's why I wanted to rip it apart about what uh, what it's operating with and I know how much flash it's got uh, i will look at uh, uh, custom firmware on it so fortunately I don't see here because all there was for connectors on it is this guy back here that was uh, populated so that might be a bit of a problem, uh, seeing as how they didn't uh, leave like a, a JTAG header anywhere that I noted. Slap it back together, make sure I didn't uh, take a closer look at this hole, make sure I didn't damage anything in there, and uh, yeah, well that's it for what's inside. Alright, so I got it all reassembled here, and I'll just uh, apply some power and see what happens. All right, so we moved over to the computer here, and, and uh, I'm now going to log in. So the default username is AU, and the password is simply 1234. So we'll log in. It's all in Japanese, but right up here you got the option in the top right to uh, change uh, languages. There's just English and Japanese, so we'll change it on over to English here. So the first is a uh, simple uh, status page. So as you can see, it's got all three of the uh, SSIDs, first two being on the 2.4 and the last one being on the five gig uh, radio with WAN information down at the bottom. So you get your Wi-Fi settings here. Uh, so this wireless settings is uh, just for the, the generic for the radio, for each of the two radios. Then you can set each of these uh, individually to the SSIDs uh, so you can change the name and the uh, encryption and that down below so just this number two here you have the option of setting the encryption to web if you so desire and three you don't have that and that's for the uh, five gig um, band there so you get standard MAC address filtering not really sure what this privacy separator here is uh, okay there we go so basically it's uh, sounds like it's a VLAN type type of thing creating separate um, VLANs for each of the uh, each of these so you could turn turn it on for example maybe on like number two and you could have you know if you turned off in, uh, encryption or you have a, a simple easy password on it and uh, you were using it as a, a guest uh, account. Uh, so looks like again similar, similar type of thing, and uh, it supports WPS. There's the button on there. Uh, plus, it supports pin entry. So this console basically looks like it's everything else. Um, so you know your WAN, uh, universal plug and play. Uh, not sure under the versions update here if this is uh, 
Okay, I guess it's to automatically check to see if there's new firmware. Because uh, I know somewhere in here there was a uh, thing for uploading. But uh, IP packet filters, just, just standard. You know, there's nothing really really special here. You can change your uh, login information into it as well. Uh, let's see if there's anything interesting. Is Oh, the log's disabled. So you got your clock settings here. Uh, you know, like the translation, it's very interesting, you know, clock synchronization by network, valid, invalid, instead of, you know, enabled or disabled, on, off, something like that. So, yeah, that's it. It's definitely a usable, uh, usable piece of gear. You can change, you know, a few of this, the uh, settings in there. Um, don't see anything in here, though, for... If you wanted to, uh, you wanted to be disabling things like the uh, DHCP server on it and just using it as an uh, access point, but it does have a switch on it to set it to AP. So I'm guessing that, uh, not completely sure. That's something I'd have to play around with a bit and see. Um, you know, the only thing I'm not really sure of, I didn't see options in here. It'd be nice to be able to set it up as a client and use it as an access point that way. Uh, you know, to connect wired only devices to your wireless network. Okay, till next time.